In this screencast, we're going to talk about the red number 40 in Soto Lab. We're going to talk about the experiment and a little bit about the calculations. Today, or in this lab, we're going to exploit what is known as Beer's Law, which relates absorbance of a colored solution related by two constants, molar absorptivity, path length, and concentration. We are focused E, molar absorptivity, and B, which is path lengths, are constants. So absorbance is a measure when I hit a sample of liquid that has a colored substance in it. Absorbance is a measure of how much of the light that I hit that sample with is absorbed by the sample. As we increase how much of the colored sample is in my solution, our absorbance is going to go up. And so it is a linear relationship between the two. Measuring absorbance is a relatively straightforward process using a spectrometer. We are literally going to take our sample of a certain concentration, we're going to put it into a little thing called a cuvette, put it in the spectrometer, and the absorbance is going to get spat up. So it's a very simple measurement. We are going to exploit this linear relationship, and because what we want is a mathematical relationship between the absorbance of the solution and its concentration, very similar to the sugar and soda lab that we did a couple weeks ago. So the absorbance is going to be our y, because it's linear related to the concentration. So the concentration of our solution will be our x, and then our slope will be numerically equal to molar absorptivity times b, and then we have that other b, but this is a different b, this is that y-intercept, which I put in quotes. So we are going to make a series of solutions of known concentration. And we are going to we are going to make those solutions of various different colors. We are going to be able to calculate what the concentration is, and then we are going to have our spectrometer give us the absorbance. Then we will have a nice our set of data points of which we can then get our equation that relates mathematically absorbance versus concentration. This will allow us because then what we're going to do is we are going to measure our absorbance of our soda sample. Knowing the mathematical relationship between absorbance and concentration, we take our absorbance of our soda sample and calculate our concentration. So this concentration of our soda sample, that is our goal for the day. Again, very similar to the sugar and soda lab we did a couple weeks ago. However, in this experiment, it's going to be a little bit more difficult. And the reason it's going to be a little bit more difficult has to do with how intense our solutions are. We are going to be, the way we are going to determine our concentration of our diluted sample is we are going to use what is known as the dilution equation. So we have concentration of the stock times the volume of the stock. So you will be given a solution of known concentration and you'll know what this concentration is and you're going to, to add a certain amount to a volumetric flask and then what we're going to do is we are going to dilute it to some new volume. So for example, you might take two milliliters of a stock solution of a certain concentration, so the concentration of the stock, and dilute it to a total volume of 10 milliliters. So two milliliters, and then I add enough water to go 10 milliliters. So what will happen is the concentration, obviously, will go down because we are adding more water. Right, so if I have a solution of Kool-Aid of a particular concentration, if I add water, obviously it's going to get diluted and it's going to get less colored. That's what we're doing. But we can determine, if we know the concentration of the stock solution, if we know the concentration of the stock solution, and we know the volume of that stock solution, and we know how much we diluted it by, we can solve for C sub D. So we know concentration of the stock, volume of stock, how much we put in. We know the volume of the dilute. We can calculate the concentration of the dissolved substance. So when I'm adding water again, I'm just diluting it, but the mass of the dissolved substance doesn't change, but its concentration does. That's how we're going to determine those concentrations. So here's our flow chart, if you will, for the experiment. So we are given a certain concentration of red number 40. Right? It'll, it'll be a, a large bottle in the lab of a solution containing red number 40, of a known concentration. So it'll be very, very dark. And then what we're going to do is we are going to dilute them using that previous equation. We're going to dilute them into 10 milliliter volumetric flasks, most likely 10 milliliter volumetric flasks. And we're going to make a series of solutions of different concentrations. 
So we're going to make a whole bunch of different solutions, and for each one of those solutions, those diluted solutions, we're going to be able to calculate what those concentrations are using the dilution equation, and then we are going to directly measure the absorbance of each one. So we have a bunch of individual data points where we know the concentration of the diluted solution and their absorbance. From that, we are going to be able to make our Beer's Law graph. Again, concentration versus absorbance. The equation of that line will then give us the mathematical relationship between absorbance and concentration. Where the problem is going to come in is our determining of our red red number 40 is we our soda sample is going to be so concentrated that our spectrometer is not going to be able to read it. The, the absorbance will be greater than 1, which is outside of the range of the spectrometer. So what we're going to do is we are going to take our red number 40 sample, which is too dark, right, it's too intense, and we are going to dilute it. And we're going to dilute it with a known amount. So, for example, I might put 2 milliliters of soda and then dilute it to 10 milliliters. But I'm knowing the volume of how much I diluted it, I know what that ratio is. So again, back to our equation. In this case, when we were diluting our soda sample, before we were, we were diluting our solution of known concentration, now we're going to be diluting our soda sample. But if we know all these volumes, if we're very, very good about it, we'll be able to, we'll be able to do that math, no problem. So we dilute our soda sample down to a, a concentration that is small enough that we can actually take its absorbance. So we dilute our soda sample such that absorbance is less than 1, which allows us to actually then measure and get our absorbance. So we have our absorbance of our diluted unknown solution. Armed with our Beer's Law graph, we know the absorbance and the concentration, and we know that mathematical relationship. We can get, go from absorbance to concentration. That's why we made that, that graph. So from absorbance and the Beer's Law, we can get the concentration of the diluted unknown. The diluted unknown. But our goal today is to calculate what the concentration of red number 40 was in the original, the original sample. But we can do that. We know the concentration of the diluted unknown. We are trying to calculate the concentration of the undiluted unknown. And so we can use the same dilution formula. So now, the concentration of the dilute, this was our diluted sample that we took the absorbance of. We know how much we diluted it by. We know the volume of the soda that we put in. And so in the second part of this experiment, we are actually concentrating, if you calculating, if you will, the concentration of the stock soda solution. So it's we're using the dilution equation sort of backwards from the way that we used it earlier. So one more time in review quickly. Series of solutions of known concentration by diluting a stock solution of known concentration. So we make a series of dilutions of known concentration, measure the absorbance of each one of those, allowing us to get data to find the linear relationship between absorbance and a concentration. That linear relationship gives us an equation. Our soda sample is diluted. The absorbance of that diluted unknown, of that, I'm sorry, of that this diluted soda sample. We take the absorbance, use the mathematical relationship to get the concentration of the diluted soda sample. Knowing how much we diluted by, we did a quantitative dilution. We know the volume of the soda that we put in. We know what we diluted it to. We can back calculate what is the concentration of the red number 40 in the original soda sample. Good luck.